Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. I decided to resign and left a little surprise for my colleagues who were mocking me. The second story. My friend used me to arrange her birthday at my expense and invite her friends. I stopped being friends with her. The third story. Manager does not pay me full salary, so I refuse to go to work. The first story is the story of a guy who got tired of some stupid co-workers and how he went out in a blaze of glory. I had the misfortune of working for good old Restaurant Inc. for 2.5 years as an assistant manager. I worked torturous hours and put up with unbelievably rude people, and all for 7 bucks an hour. What more could you ask? One time a drunken idiot actually drove his van through the double doors and halfway into the dining room, spraying the horrified patrons with glass and antifreeze. I cheered. He was arrested. Nobody was hurt. Anyway, I worked under an incredibly obese woman who was the manager, and in these days and times would have been convicted of harassment, had then been now. There were two other assistant managers, an ex-marine with the IQ of a jello pudding bar and a three-time divorced horror named Sue who my friends and I had affectionately dubbed Trog. As luck would have it, ex-marine and Trog became boyfriend and girlfriend, and subsequently my nemesis. So here's the scenario. One extremely large woman with the hots for me, one ex-marine drooling down his tie most of the time, and one unpleasant Trog-type woman constantly exploring ways to make my life miserable. Like making me work the 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. shift, four days a week. It was a nightmare. My clothes smelled like hamburger and grease all the time, and so did I, even after a shower. I was constantly tired and unsure of what day it was half the time. So after almost three years of putting up with this crap, I finally snapped and plotted my revenge and my exit from service. I need to explain exactly how the cash register and video monitor system works in order for y'all to thoroughly appreciate what happens next. When the cashier enters into customer's order, it appears on a video monitor over the appropriate workstation. So if you order a hamburger, fries, and a Coke, the video monitor over the fryer station says, one fries. The video over the grill says, one hamburger. And the video over the front counter says, one fries, one hamburger, one Coke. And then a receipt tape comes out with all the info on it, which the person bagging the order uses and has to give to customer when done. Another thing you need to know is that certain items are only available at certain times. Dinner items are only rung up after 6 p.m. at night, for example. So, this is the shenanigan that I pulled off. A holiday week was approaching, and the manager was taking the week off to go to Lake Tahoe. That left Trog, Butthead, and myself to work the store and its 25 employees. Well, after the manager left, they decided that they would take the weekend off and stick me with basically around-the-clock duty. Bees? It was like 4th of July weekend and I was screwed. So, here's what I did. I was going to be stuck working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They were going to leave Friday evening at 7 p.m. when my shift began and take off to Monterey. So that Thursday evening I worked until 4 a.m. Being alone in the store, I had uninterrupted access to the computer system that you used to program the cash registers. I methodically went through and reprogrammed all titles for the dinner keys. Chicken dinner now said, Sue is stinking troll. Fish dinner now said, Ron is big P. Etc, etc. There were a total of five dinner keys, I think, and I programmed them all with these niceties. I then tossed the programming guidebook into the dumpster just in case. Nobody else except myself and the manager knew how to program the registers. Haha. <laughs> now I had to rely on a bit of luck as well, because I needed to pick up my paycheck the following day at lunchtime, and it would be disastrous if someone accidentally hit a dinner key during the day. So the following day I appear at noon to get my paycheck, and all my personal effects at the store. <laughs> and everything went by without incident. Trog and Co. made a few snide remarks about how much fun they were going to have in Monterey all weekend, and I cheerfully ignored them and wished them a great time. I was able to put together the whole story several months later when I ran into one of my old employees, and this is what happened. It came as quite a shock to them when at 6 p.m. I still hadn't shown up for work. I was, in fact, at the grand opening of Margaritaville in San Francisco about that time, well into my fourth margarita and feeling no pain. Keeping close watch at the time, I called the restaurant promptly at 6.05 p.m. Me. Hello? Trog. Jim? Where the F are you? Me. Why, I'm in San Francisco enjoying my fourth margarita. How are you this fine evening? Trog, what the heck does that mean? Me, oh, hey, aren't you guys leaving for Monterey shortly? Better get cracking. Trog, hold on a second. Sound of phone dropping. Suddenly, wild laughter erupts in the background. Something like pee, oh my god, can be heard. 
Trog. I owe you son of a bee. Ah. Me. Well, my drinks just arrived. Have a nice weekend. Trog. I. Uh. I. Me. Do something about that stutter, would you? Me. Toodles. Click. The timing was perfect. About 30 seconds into my phone call, the first dinner item was rung up, extolling the virtues of her boyfriend's D. Haha. <laughs> the phrase Ron is a big P appeared on the registered tapes, over the grill and fryers and over the front drive up window. Plus, the employees had to give the receipt to the customers. The place was packed. Dinner rush is in full swing. All the dinner items being rung up were showing at all workstations in the restaurant, with all the different things I'd programmed showing up. Needless to say, Trog and Butthead worked around the clock all weekend long. Because the manager was out of town, they didn't know how to reprogram the register keys. They had to leave my programs running until past midnight, when the district manager for restaurant called in to reprogram all the registers. I was an instant hero with all the employees at the store, some of whom I still see up to this day. I lucked out and was hired where I work now and have been here for eight years. I will never ever work in a fast food restaurant again. The second story is Princess Zilla trying to take over my birthday. I went to a bridal expo years ago just to check it out and plus free cake and food samples for an entrance fee of $8. I won a lottery for a free banquet space package good for 15 people at a local Dave & Buster's, which can be used for birthdays or a bachelorette party. I was super stoked, told my friends and planned to use it for my upcoming birthday. One of those friends was Emma, whom I felt sorry for because she said her parents were emotionally abusive, and I went mommy mode on her and spoiled her. To summarize her backstory, she was this model church-going gal who tries hard to please her crazy mom. She's always broke, has a disability, heart, leg, lungs, etc., considers herself a makeup guru and is always boy crazy. A recurring theme for her is how every year she's always engaged. I felt sorry for her at first because all the stories she told me of her mom being bipolar etc etc and she would often stay at my house several times when she runs away. This was a 24 year old girl acting like she's 15. It was around this time I was noticing that she was a habitual liar and attracted a lot of negative drama. My friends noticed that a part of her bad attitude was rubbing off on me and I agreed but Emma would reel me back in always with a sob story. When she found out I won the banquet space, she suggested we use it to do a joint birthday celebration as our birthdays were just 1.5 months apart. I didn't mind because we had the same circle of friends and well, maybe only be inviting five to six outsiders of the 15 allowed. We still had to put up money for food. That part was discounted. I agreed to do 150 to $200 and all she had to give was around 50 or 75 since all I wanted to order was finger foods and have fun playing games at the arcade since we get $20 worth of free gameplay as part of the package. She refused to contribute money, citing how always broke she was. I always paid for our meals and gas money, then threw a lot of tantrums on how the party should be done from music to theme and food acting, as if this was her party, and boy was her taste expensive. When I showed her my guest list, she flipped. I wanted to invite some of my coworkers and a guy I was then seeing. She said no, gave me an attitude about it, and even made me feel guilty about the whole situation, that I started to question myself, and if this party was really worth the stress. The final straw was when I listed our own friends on the invite list. She refused as she wanted to invite some dudes that she was heavily flirting with and wanted to take over her, my party, and wouldn't hear the fact I have the party package and want it. When pressed why she won't let me have our own friends be part of our party, she matter-of-factly stated she didn't really like them. When I asked another person for advice on the situation, the person told me I'm the selfish one, and the moral and human thing to do is to give her the party package, since it was never mine to begin with. WTF? Petty revenge. I made myself invisible to Emma, ignored her calls and messages up to the date of the week of the planned party. She must have realized that I was bailing, cause she went from Princess Zilla mode to sweet innocent gal, asking me what's up on the party. I just kept putting her off. Since I never sent invites out, nothing was lost, at least on my side, and I passed my birthday with friends that mattered watching a movie and eating fast food and cake. Emma never got her party, and I got the satisfaction that she bragged having this big fully paid event that will never happen and ended up sulking. As for the person who gave me that SH advice, I stopped communication with him altogether when I realized he always and admittedly told me he thought very little of me as a person. Good riddance. Though I would hear of him from time to time. Aftermath and Petty Revenge too. Emma did worm her way one last time to me after she gave me a sob story that she got kicked out of her house and needed a place to stay. I owned my own place and let her stay, but she didn't have a copy of the key and was locked out after she left while I was at work. I found out that she planned to use my place and my bed to F some random dude she just met. No, 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 and no way. I turned off my phone and didn't come home that night, stayed at my then boyfriend's place. She waited till 10 p.m. outside my house till her boy toy got impatient and left her. 
She ended up going back home to her parents that night, sent me a fake sob story apology, and I avoided her for almost three years. She has since started her own family. I still see her around our social circles, but I don't feel as close to trusting of her anymore. The last story is, I'm not on call. I'm a farm tech at a well-known pharmacy. I have a very full life, but make it work with a hectic schedule. My availability is 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday. I calculated it out and it came to around 53 hours of availability during business hours. This is because my mother has COPD and I help her with things she can't do for herself, grocery shopping, laundry, and whatever she needs. Everything was fine until we get a new pharmacy manager. He has no idea how to do anything. The team is shocked at what he does. Miss is ordering medications we need to fill orders multiple days in a row, jumping ship on the minute when his shift is over, even when we're swamped, and when it bleeds all the way into the weekend and Monday because we're trying to catch up gets mad. Just not an effective leader. Now on to what happened. My friend who was the closer 2pm to 10pm took a way better offer with another company and left. No two week notice, nothing. It's fine because she was getting crapped on with closing duties and all. I'm asked by the farm manager to work her shifts. Now I've always been a slave to my job in the past circumstances, but I'm trying to have a work-life balance and not burn myself out. I notice after declining that instead of my 32 to 40 average hours, I'm only getting 8. Okay? Straight up retaliation, but you know how retail is. And as long as they can cover their butts with a reason, I have no action. They say, well, there are no hours, which is slightly true. Okay, I'll ride it out. Two weeks pass and the hours go back up. Eight hours still. I ask the manager why. I only have hours for people who can close, which is complete bull because everyone else is a student and doesn't close, so I'm being punished. That's okay because I'm Scandinavian and can hold a grudge for a long time. Now for the next puzzle piece. I run a cake business on the side. It's a hobby that I love but I don't push it to make me insane money because it's not what I want my career to be, but I can stack up orders if I want. A key team member who's not great calls in last night. It's okay, we're a good team. We can hold it together until our time is up. As more and more people go home, the pharmacy falls more and more behind. The pharmacy manager has nowhere to go. He's the only one on duty and now has to fill and approve because the closing tech has to handle counter and phone. This is where mistakes are made because a pharmacist should not be doing both. End of my shift comes and I say see ya and leave. If he had been any other pharmacist, I would have stayed and helped until they were less busy. But nope, you lost my loyalty. They were three hours till close with just the two of them. That brings us to 7.30 this morning. I get a text from pharmacy manager asking if I can come in for my regular shift. I wasn't scheduled for because same coworker called in again second day in a row. Heck no, I'm not on call. You don't schedule me as punishment or to force me into a closing shift availability, F off. No, you caught me on a day I have cake orders due. I'm not on the schedule, so I filled my week up with orders. Bit you on the A, didn't it? Because everyone else is in school. Suffer. P.S. I also hear he's in trouble with the district because there have been tons of complaints on pickup times and by the team on how he works. Have fun. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.